Hello and welcome Bhaskar Desai from Pharma Growth Hub and uh, today's session is going to be very special. Uh, today we are going to talk about how one can select the appropriate dimensions for your HPLC column during method development because most of the times we only talk about selection of stationary phase but uh, the much attention is not provided on selecting the appropriate dimension for the column. So let us begin with the talk. So these are the four important characteristics as far as uh, column dimension is concerned. The first one is pore size, the second one is particle size, the third one is length of column and the third one is the inner diameter. So let us understand how these four different parameters can be selected wisely to have the optimum resolution based retention time for your uh, analytes. So let us begin with the very first point the pore size. Pore size describes the average pore diameter of the pores on the surface of the silica material. Your silica material is going to be a base material and your stationary phase will be maybe C8 or C18. The pore size determines whether a molecule can diffuse into and out of the packing. So unless and until you know the pore size of the uh, silica particle and the, and the size of your analyte, you will not be able to understand whether the, the diffusion of the compound inside the pore is going to happen. The molecule must fit into the porous structure in order to interact with the stationary phase. That means the stationary phase which is uh, available onto the Paste material like silica is actually available inside the pore and unless and until our analyte can enter into the pore the actual retention will not happen that's the purpose of the molecule must fit into the porous structure in order to interact with the stationary phase the smaller pore size packing example 80 to 120 angstrom are based for small molecules with the molecular weight up to 2000 Daltons. But in case if you have the, the bigger molecules like uh, polypeptides and proteins, then you must choose the, the wider pore size uh, columns like 200 to 450 angstrom. And in case if the molecules are very high in their size, then you can again go for the, uh, the pore size like 1000 to 4000 angstrom unit. Now the last point is very important. The wider pore columns tend to provide a higher surface area and therefore more analyte mass can be applied before peak shape asymmetry becomes a problem. That means the bigger is the pore size, bigger is going to be your surface area and hence the more amount of analytic analyte can be accomplished by the given stationary phase. So you will not have the asymmetric peaks if the surface area is the constraint. I hope you understand about the importance of uh, pore size and based on to the, the molecular uh, size, you have to decide on to the pore size. The second parameter is the particle size. The particle size is the average particle size of the packing in the HPLC column. So you must have seen that the, the columns with various particle size ranging from 10 micron to 1.8 micron. The standard particle size for HPLC column was 5 micron for the long time until the mid 1990s when 3.5 micron became popular for method development. So at the beginning of the uh, HPLC column development, the 5 to 10 micron columns were very, very common. But in today's time, you can have the column with the smaller particle size like 3.5 micron. Higher speed and resolution can be achieved with sub 2 to 3 micron, including 1.8 micron particle size. So what is the relationship between resolution and particle size? It is a inversely proportional. So the column with a smaller particle size will result into a higher resolution and vice versa. 
So in case uh, if you want to have the faster uh, chromatography, you supposed to choose the smaller particle size. If the particle size of the column is reduced by half, the plate number doubles, assuming column length remains the same. Now what is the uh, plate number? The plate number is nothing but the amount of interaction that is going to happen with the stationary phase. That means the more amount of interaction is possible with the low size particles. And according to one study, the part, if you reduce the particle size by half, the plate number gets doubled. Uh, let me further uh, explain with the example also. However, if the particle size halves, column back pressure increases with the four times. Okay, so you may be thinking, okay, just reduce the particle size and you will have the better resolution, better plate count. But that comes with the challenge. And what is the challenge with the reduced particle size column? Is the higher back pressure. Also note that as particle size reduces, so does the retaining frit porosity. Because to hold the packaging material, you have the, the frit on to the both end of the column. And if you reduce the particle size, then the frit's uh, mesh size will also get reduced. And because of this reduced mesh size of the frit, you have to use the, the sample and the mobile phase well filtered like using a filter paper of 2.2 micron. So you have to give the more attention or greater care while preparing the sample solution and even the mobile phase preparation. The next parameter is the column length. So how the column length can be optimized for your separation? Let us understand. So if the column length doubles, the plate number and analysis time also gets doubled. So you can also understand that the resolution also can get better with the increased column length. As column length increases, the back pressure increases linearly. That means with the higher column length column, you can expect the higher back pressure too. For example, a 2.1 by 100 mm column packed with 3.5 micron particle generates about 12,000 theoretical plates. Now this is the example with the 3 point micron particle column with the 100 mm column length. Now, by reducing the particle size from 3.5 to 1.8 micron, the efficiency of the same 2.1 by 100 mm column is doubled to 24,000 theoretical plates. We discussed this uh, increase in the plate counts with the decrease in the particle size just a few slides before. Very often, an efficiency of 24,000 plates is not required. So the column length can be halved to 50 mm. We have the 100 mm column originally, but uh, you can reduce the column length to 50 mm. Now with the expected efficiency of 12,000 plates, of the 12,000 plates, and you can understand by reading this content. The analysis time will be cut in half with this shorter column. That means if you have the shorter column, with the reduced particle size, your analysis time will certainly get reduced. Let us talk about the, the last parameter, uh, last dimension part, that is the column inner diameter. So what is the role of inner diameter? The smaller diameter columns require less solvent. You can straightforward understand that the cost of the analysis can be saved, reduced by having the is smaller diameter columns. Smaller diameter column also increases the sensitivity of for your analyte. It's a double bonus for you. The smaller diameter columns reduces the solvent consumption and also it helps in increasing the sensitivity of your analytical method. In some cases, 
if the column diameter is reduced by half sensitivity increase increases by four to five times but only assuming the injection mass is kept constant there's a great increment into the sensitivity observed while reducing the inner diameter of the column for example when the same amount of sample is injected onto 2.1 mm id column the peaks are about four times higher than onto 4.6 mm id columns so the response for the peak can get increased by fourfold it's a great achievement as far as the sensitivity of analytical method is concerned so what is the final conclusion having understood all these parameters and their impact on to the chromatography let us now conclude how this can be further selected during the hplc method development so to perform high throughput analysis a short column with small particles example sub to micron may be the best choice if you are looking for the shorter run times you should go with the short column and with the small particle size if you have a complex separation involving like many sample components are present into a sample then a long column packed with small particle size could be chosen with a reasonable back pressure because with the increase in the column length we can expect the increase into the back pressure but what is the advice over here in case if you have the method development for related substances involving lot many uh, components then you can go with the little long column but always maintain or select the smaller particle size maybe 150 mm 3 micron something like that 150 mm here is the length and 3 micron is the particle size if you are performing mass spectrometry a small internal diameter column example 2.1 mm id may be the best choice due to the lower flow rates required for the ms detection and the for preparatory chromatography the larger particles like 5 micron or 10 micron packed into a larger diameter columns are often used the only point here is in case of preparatory hplc as the diameter is higher you may have to choose the higher flow rates so thank you so much for watching this video and i hope you have you you must have got a better clarity on optimizing the column uh, dimensions thank you so much and keep learning